Okay, so we learned quite a lot from the first video. Um, number one, microphone cable up through the t-shirt and out the front, that's going to keep it away. Number two, check you've got the gears of the drill set in the correct position. This one's in the right position, this one's the right position. Number three, make sure you've got the right sweep of brace so you get as much torque as you can. Number four, make sure you've got the right screw and the right screw nut. So now that we've got this uh, in place, we'll just see how much quicker this takes. So another thing I've learned is I'm going to put a screw in right away there and this holds it in place and I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not worried about it slipping. So watch the difference in this. So this gear is set correctly now. So though it turns slower at the screw head, that means I can get a lot more force into it. It's a lot easier for me. Of course, as it gets deeper in the wood, it tightens up. But with these teeth, with these turbo drive teeth, they're like little, little saw teeth all along the screw. Uh, they make it a lot easier. I use these screws throughout this entire build and if you think about it they are expensive they might be twice the price of ordinary screws like this this one without the serrated teeth in it but the ease of putting them in far outweighs any benefit and cost and anyway if i spent say 500 pounds in screws for the whole build um half of that's 250 pounds so i think that's money well spent considering the cost of the entire build which was for both workshops over £25,000. So I remember using these drills building the workshop and the screws going in really easily because they're going into soft wood. This is hard wood which is why it's a lot tougher. Um, anyway that's why we're using the turbo drive screws so let's crack on and do the rest of the screws. Also another one, one of these broke, maybe it hit some piece of metal inside, I don't know, but it broke and I had to put another one in beside that uh, stupid screw that failed earlier. That's done with, that can go out of the way. I've done with this one, that can go out of the way. Might not need this brace anymore, but we'll just go ahead with these and see what happens. They go right in. Did I mention the exercise value doing this? The only downside with these drills is this handle. For some reason it's supposed to go in your shoulder. I don't get that. That's, why would you do that? But anyway. Um, maybe there's some reasoning for it, but I would prefer a big grip, maybe that's something I can get my hand in with a brace on it. Um, these don't work as well, they're a bit difficult to hold, but put a bit of weight on them and they work fine. That's good. These Torx head screws are actually much better for engagement than the crosshead screws, the PZ screws. From what I believe, PZ screws were originally designed by the Canadians for building aircraft as it happens, so that before they were over tightened they would cam out. Apparently, I don't know if that's true or not, but these torx head ones are far better. But you don't really get them in all sizes, so they're not that useful. And also in softwood, PZ is just fine, it's not an issue. It's 
was down quite a bit. There we go. Right, well that was a lot better, wasn't it? Now I need the rest. Right, the next thing to do is to put the vise back on. Thankfully, this is already manufactured, so I don't need to do any manufacturing. It's just a case of dropping it in and bolting it on. So this is the vise. It's just a bog standard woodworking vise, <coughs> quite a big one. Um, the back end slots into the slots, the slot like that. And then it gets bolted in. Now what I'm going to do first is to close the jaw. And the reason for that is if I just nip it up there and tighten it up, make sure the screw holes are all aligned. Like that. Yeah, it just means that the jaw is going to be held in place whilst I'm working on it. And the jaw and the front face of the bench are going to be parallel. So we'll go around the other side and look at the bolts. So thankfully when we moved house with the common sense to dismantle the bench and put it, all the bolts in a box called bench bolts. Um, the assortment of bolts, I've got some long, long bolts which were actually to hold the bench to the previous frame, uh, leg frame, so I don't need them. I've got some small bolts which were to hold the tail vise in place, which I'm not going to put on anymore. Uh, I'm going to sell that. So don't need them. So we're left with these four bolts. These are 19 millimeter bolts. I've got two 19 millimeter socket. One is for uh, a 13 mil socket and the other is for a six mil socket. Now I'm going to use this brace. I haven't used it to drill nuts before. Uh, sorry, to tighten nuts before. But I did years ago get this little adapter here that goes into these four jaw chucks. Um, got it from Veritas, Canadian company, and uh, it allows the tapered jaw chuck to hold quite firmly. Right, that's all ready to go. So we'll give it a go with one of them, it's this one. Right, let's move everything else out the way until we need it. So, haven't done this before, let's see if this works. So we'll put one in there, first of all, hoping this makes it quite easy. Um, just check the washers, yeah I've got one washer in there, good. Well that's dead easy. Tight tightening up a bit there. Um, just hoping that's the right bolt. Yeah, I've only got these bolts for that, so that's going to be the right one. Let's put another one in on the other side, and then we've got it secure. Will it clear the leg? Didn't quite clear the leg, so this is going to be the slow version. Well, I might be able to do some of it. There we go. There's a little play in the socket, which enables me to tilt it over somewhat. Pretty tight now. That'll do for the time being. Right. There we go. Well, this is going a lot better than the earlier one, so. For once, something that I'm trying out actually works. Good. Uh, mind you, we're not finished yet. This one's a bit tight. I'm thinking maybe I should have put a little bit of wax on the screws. I think that's probably about as far as I can go with them. So I'll finish that off with the, the ratchet on this side anyway get quite a bit more leverage. It's going to be
we've got a little way to go. Again, serious exercise value. But you probably need some kind of pneumatic uh, nut driver to do this in. So we'll just have to persevere with the hand tools. We're almost there with that one. So I'll work on the other ones. <clears throat> yeah, I don't get much leverage with that. Let's just go with this. Okay, so the brace drives so far with a full circular motion, but then yeah, you need this extra leverage with the ratchet arm. <clears throat> to get them rest, the rest of them in. Surprisingly tight though. I reckon maybe the, the beach has swelled a bit. So it's tightened up the holes. Anyway, keep going. Yeah, that's tight. Good. Right, you can feel that is tight now. tight as that's going to go. That's as tight as it's going to go. <sighs> Fully in there. Last one. Excellent. Job done. Time to turn it over. So I need to to move it this way first of all, so that I can uh, get rolling room, as it were. So it should be should be easy enough. Microphone cable is a bit short here. Just make sure my back's well braced. That's easy. This is the difficult bit. This bench top was 40 kilos. I know that the vice is 18 kilos because I, I sold a similar one recently on eBay and had to weigh it for postage. So we're, we're up. So the actually the bench top's 80 kilos, isn't it? So we're up to 98 kilos. Um, say a couple of kilos for the saw horses. That's 100 kilos. So I'm lifting 50 kilos. If I'm lifting half which is getting to be my limit. I've just noticed a little screwdriver head there. <sighs> yeah, I can use the I can use the bench actually as a lever, as a handle, the vice rather. Right, let's see what we can do. I'm not going to strain my back doing this. But there we go. Well, that was all right. But it's 75% of my capacity. So now we just have to move it again this way a bit so we can roll it like that. But I've got good grip here now, got things to grip on. Yeah, I can feel the weight of that bench at this end. Maybe about there is going to be fine. Right. Good, now what? The only thing I'm worried about is the flexing of these legs. I'm thinking it might be better to pull it this way rather than lift it. We'll give it a go with that first of all. Need something to grip on. Need 
these are brilliant, aren't they? getting any leverage at all there let's try lifting it from the other side that's sliding ah right idea Right, let's see if this will work. Yeah, good. Oh, that's good. Right, move it out a bit. Right, that's the workbench assembled, ready for Saturday. Now it's assembled, but the surface is not brilliant, so I think the next thing I might do is to sharpen up some of my planes and have a go at flattening the top and cleaning it up a bit. Not 100% not necessary for what we're going to be doing on Saturday, but um, might as well give it a go. So the next video is going to be about sharpening brand new Lee Nielsen number five and a half um, my new Lee Nielsen number four and the big Lee Nielsen number eight so this just took an afternoon I'm pleased about that that's a lot quicker than making the legs from from these parts over there that I was talking about so that's it so until the next time thank you very much for watching I'm Jim Lynn this is uh, Mr Lynn's workshop and uh, I'm really surprised that worked actually